Evening, Alan Rowley, uh, Health Perm Resourcing Limited. Um, simple introduction: Health Perm is a recruitment company focused on permanent recruitment of Philippine and international nurses into the NHS in the UK and into healthcare in the UAE. Our operations are in the Philippines. Our sales teams are in the UK and the UAE, and we've got a single, very simple, single operating model across our three locations. Uniquely, we own the subsidiary in the Philippines and we are POEA licensed. Um, we've had success winning mandates in the UK and the UAE. We are placing candidates that have landed, a management team that are experienced and knowing what they're doing. We only present for interview in the UK candidates that have already passed their international English, English language tests, so IELTS. Our goal, very simply, is to be a trusted partner for permanent experienced nurses into healthcare markets in the UK and the GCC. Our group structure, um, Health Perm Resourcing, top company in the UK, uh, wins mandates from UK hospitals, runs interviews with those hospitals and manages the onboarding of the candidates into the country. We have GHR Healthcare Recruitment in the Philippines, which is POEA licensed, that recruits the nurses, performs the screening, validates their credentials, and helps the hospitals in the UK shortlist. In the UAE, we've got also a second recruitment pool where we can take international candidates that have already left the Philippines that want to come to the UK from the GCC. We can also place candidates into the GCC market through our subsidiary there. We've just opened our own training company in Dubai called Health Perm Training. Any candidate that wants to come to the UK, one of their first conditions of coming is they must have IELTS. We find a lot of candidates that have left the Philippines in the GCC, want to come into the NHS, um, need to get IELTS. We've just started the training centre there to help them on their journey. And we have a partnership agreement with GHR India. They have a number of candidates that want to come either into the GCC or to the UK. Um, they'll either supply us with candidates or we'll help them process their candidates through the POEA license that we have in Manila. Uh, very simply, why? If you look at the UK, it's well known there is a shortage of nurses. Okay? The numbers range from, are we short by 20,000? Are we short by 40,000? The answer is we're short. Nurses are now on the shortage of occupation list with the UK VI, which means they get priority on visa application processes. Uh, we've got an aging population, NHS is reducing budgets, there's a fear of Brexit. Just to throw out a large number, because we will only do permanent placements, a large UK hospital that I won't mention spends north of £15 million a year on agency and locum staff and has operating on a ward maybe 25% of their ward personnel at any point in time are from agencies and agencies charge a premium. We're not an agency, we just do permanent recruitment. If you look at the UAE market, there's an expanding medical industry, there's an aging population, medical insurance is becoming more mature. It's ripe for <coughs> Philippine nurses to go in there, which is already established as a business practice anyway. Our operating model is very simple. We are a <coughs> recruitment company, we've got Mandates that we win from hospitals, candidates that we recruit, we screen and validate, we work with hospitals to shortlist and manage the interview cycle, we help the candidates on board, which when you're taking a candidate from, say, the Philippines into the UK, through the UK VI, through the NMC, through leaving a country probably for their first time, arriving in our country probably for their first time, Finding accommodation is not a simple process. They've never done it before. We help them do it. And finally, we've got finance, invoicing, and payments. To give you a flavor of where we are, we've got on the books one very large UK hospital. We have three other NHS hospitals and two UAE home care providers that we are working with. There's a potential in that mix with, for an order book of somewhere of a thousand overseas nurses to come into the UK. 
and into the UAE. Of our candidate pool, we use a CRM system called JobAdder, cloud-based, so everybody in the company can use it, that we can talk to the hospitals with and have an audit trail, candidate selection, and all the information we need. We've got about 4,000 qualified specialist international nurses on our database to choose from for interview. In terms of the prospects in our commercial pipeline, we've got discussions going on with six hospitals right now in the UK, and we've got about 10 hospitals and or partner relationships developing in the UAE. Um, in terms of workflow and recruiting in this space, it is not flash to bang, it is a steady managed process. And it starts from getting a job order, which probably takes between one, three, six months of relationship building, finding the right person to speak to at the NHS, establishing your credentials as a fairly new company, and getting probably meeting three with a decision maker in the recruitment team. They will place a job order with us, which is along the lines of, in three Tuesdays time, we'd like to interview a cohort of 20 nurses with the following expertise and specialisms. Okay. So we'll then go through our recruitment database with the hospitals, uh, sorry, with the decision maker. We'll go through screening and shortlisting to find the candidates that are ideal for interview. We then manage the interview process with the hospital. So all our interviews are typically by Skype. Prior to the interviews, um, the interview screening team at the hospital has gone through CVs to make sure there's relevant medical experience and educational experience. We've already validated their education and credentials. And we will literally, we'll sit on with the recruitment team in the UK via Skype. We'll have our person in the Philippines or internationally sitting with the candidates via Skype. We manage a day of Skype interviews. And a day could be one room with 10, two rooms with 20. It just scales up. Each interview lasts about 45 minutes. There's usually some structure to it, and then it goes free, fall, uh, free flow. And you can imagine the more experienced recruiters are quicker, and the newer recruiters seem to take rather longer. So the day schedule can be very focused, or it can be very long. Okay? Um, to give you some of our success factors, because we spend a lot of time up front screening with our team in the Philippines, um, our interview success rate is high. So we don't put weak candidates in front of hospitals. We know what to look for. The hospitals are very experienced at recruiting nurse candidates. They know what to look for. So the players that we're putting on the pitch are usually good ones. Post-interview, the job offer comes out three to five days later. Uh, bear in mind, I've still got a candidate that's international, not in the UK, looking to come to the UK. So we have an onboarding process where all of their um, experience, education and credentials need to get revalidated. They need to have IELTS, which we've already established they do. They need to have computer-based training as a requirement to work for UK government. And they need to be registered with the NMC. And believe it or not, they have to send original red ribbon papers into the NMC. The NMC have got a service level agreement, shall we call it, that says they'll take no more than 75 days from when they actually decide to pick up the papers to giving the nurse a decision letter. So once that decision letter is reached, the nurse can then apply for an exit visa from the Philippines, come to the UK. We meet them at the airport. We've already organized accommodation for them with the hospital. We will take them to the hospital and they'll start their first day work and start their ori orientation, we call it. So that's the end-to-end -end process. And that's what we say and what we do to our UK clients, the UK hospitals. And the reason we do all that end-to-end -end is that we have the relationship with the candidates in the Philippines. And what we want to ensure is if we've got 10, 20, 30, 40 candidates from that interview session, that significantly all of them arrive. The horror stories that you find with companies that don't have their dedicated business in the Philippines is they'll do, they'll do interview 100 candidates. And then a year later, maybe one's turned up. And the fall away factors are IELTS, takes a long time for Philippine candidates to pass, and nobody's talking to the candidates and managing through the process. So part of the value add of having the subsidiary in the Philippines is we're always talking to the candidates and we want to minimize attrition through the onboarding process. Yes, we know it takes time. And no, I do not have a magic button to say I can make six months become six days. We just build a pipeline up 
and keep the flow going. So we say to hospitals, it's fantastic that we're going to work together. Let's start by saying, rather than try and interview 200 next month, why don't we just start this relationship and say, we'll start with 10, we'll demonstrate we can be successful with 10, then we'll move it to 20, then we'll move it to 30. Okay. At some point in time in that relationship, when we've understood how each other works, bearing in mind, we also have to work with the visa manager inside the hospital to make sure that they are comfortable applying for visas and working together. Then we might go for a mass interview session. And we've recently done that with one hospital where after working together for about six months, we flew them out to the Philippines. We organized over three days to interview 60 candidates and it was fantastic. The plus for the candidates is they get to see the recruitment team from the UK. The plus for the recruitment team from the hospital in the UK is they actually get to see the candidates in their country. They get to go into the hospitals and they can see the difference between working in the NHS and working in a Philippine hospital. And they can understand the experience and what a three-year nurse in the Philippines can bring to the UK and what they can't bring to the UK. That works. We don't offer that on day one. We offer that once we've got the relationship established. Revenue recognition, I am an accountant. Um, we recognize revenue when the nurse starts work. It's simple as that. We have a booking, so when the, the um, job, off, job offer's been issued, that's when we chalk up the score and say, right, we've got a booking, we know what the revenue pipeline looks like. It's then about managing the onboarding process, three, four, five, six months. They start the work in the hospital that's when we recognize revenue. Okay. In the UAE, there's a smaller time lag because the onboarding cycle to come to the UK <coughs> is prescribed by UK VI. In the UAE, it's much shorter. Consequently, though, um, our revenue model, well accepted by all of our clients in the UK, is we take around about 20% of a band five nurse's first year revenue. Okay. And band five is set by NHS. And it's, the UAE is bigger volume, smaller value per candidate. So we've got a mix in our model. In terms of our objectives as to where we come from and where we are, in the UK it's very simple. Sign more mandates and grow the monthly flow rate, as we call it. Okay? Um, conduct at least one mass interview session in Manila with each large UK client each year. Um, continue to grow the bank of IELTS passes. Um, IELTS passes are, let's say gold dust, but if you've got IELTS passes and we've changed our business model so that we'll only offer you IELTS passes, then those candidates will, once they've got a job offer, will stay with you through the journey and are likely to come to the UK. If you have a candidate that doesn't have the international English language test, it is more likely than not at some point they will drop out of the onboarding process, either because they can't pass the exam or they don't feel they've got any support to pass the exam. Inside the NHS, we want to raise our profile. We are a fairly new company. Okay? So our plan is to be trusted and respected by the NHS. And believe it or not, recruitment is a little bit of a dirty word sometimes in the NHS, and recruitment agencies are somewhat frowned upon, which is why the distinction is we only do permanent, we do not do agency. The GCC is fertile ground for us. We'll continue our placements there. Highlights of the business. In my simple terms, I've got the factory in the Philippines and I've got the shop in the UK and the UAE. And that's where we are. Okay? We think there's a significant market opportunity in the UK and in the UAE. Uniquely, we have a POEA license, which is difficult to get um, and it's important to maintain. You see a lot of the competition We'll have a recruitment company in the UK and we'll go and find an agency in the Philippines and don't have that one company relationship. We use technology, so we are cloud-based job adder. So the recruiters that we've got in the Philippines can see the same candidate data as the business development team and the operations management team in the UK. Everybody can see the same thing. There's no loss of information on email. We can also use job adder to send a selection of candidates to the recruitment department in the hospital. They can ask questions interactively on a CV, accept or reject, everything's done. We don't need to step out of any systems. Everybody, in my language, does have push button reporting, which is fantastic. 
Uh, the management team we've got in both the Philippines and the UK, they're experienced and savvy. They know what we're doing. They know how to um, work with hospitals. They know how to work with candidates. Um, so the idea is reduce, minimize the attrition loss and build the sales volume. We're a new company on NEXT. We are EAS and VCT qualifying. And my name is not David Sumner. <laughs> Any questions? Oh, quite a few hands. Gentlemen just there, first off. How much is a band five nurses pay? Um, mid 20s, 20 to 26. There's a flat rate and then you get a, a London waiting and then you get a outside of London enhancement. But it's that sort of level. I, I have two questions for you. One, how do you intend to grow I.e. LTS passes. Yeah. IELTS passes. Yes. Well, what are your plans for that? Um, two strands, really. In the Philippines, there are a there are a large population of nurses. There are probably fifty to sixty thousand nurses in the Philippines that want to come into a, a UK or Western type economy. So, consequently, there are a lot of IELTS teaching centres already operating there. Okay? So we know who they are through the relationships with the British consulate. So we can partner with the IELTS centres in country. Secondly, as we've just done in Dubai, we've set up our own IELTS teaching centre and we offer the candidates in, predominantly Philippine candidates already in the GCC region or Dubai, will do a one month, a three month or a six months intensive teaching course. So part of the route is soft partnership, I would call it, with the IELTS centres. <coughs> and then running our own. So do you pay for them or do you, how do you encourage them to take part? Um, our encouragement is we, can, we don't pay for them to pass IELTS fundamentally. Okay? What, we're, what we're arbitraging is that a Philippine nurse in country will earn roughly £5,000 a year versus the opportunity of coming into the UK and the NHS and earning 25, growing to 30, growing to 35,000. So the incentive for the nurse to go on that journey is there for themselves. We will help in Dubai by providing the training facilities. They will pay their course. Okay. I'm particularly concerned about the uh, Philippines. In the Philippines, uh, we do not reimburse IELTS. It's very much up for the nurses themselves to go through the IELTS process. Because what I'm looking at, how, will, how can they afford it? Because you just said, how can they afford the training? How can, they, how can you increase the pastor? That's what I'm going at. How do you make it comfortable for them to take part in your program so that you can increase? Because the demand is short here, isn't it? Really? The demand is definitely here. Yeah. So you need them here as soon as possible, isn't it? And, it, and yeah. without that IEA, they, can, they cannot come. No, it's stage one of the visa application process. Um, we've, thought, we've looked at the economics of setting up a training center in the Philippines, and what we've what we have thought so far is that it's great that we'll run the training centre. There's no tie-in for loyalty that that candidate will stay with us. So at the moment, we are happy to go and run orientation evenings, similar to this, uh, at IELTS training centre. Our business development person will go in and will sell the benefits of coming to the UK, but we don't offer any financial incentive to the candidates to stay with us on a loyalty basis. What we try and sell, or we do sell, is the value add of coming with us, and we will help. We can place you into interviews in one of the following portfolio of hospitals we have a relationship with, and we will help you get through the process of IELTS, CBT, NMC. So we'll help do the administration for you, but we're not paying for part of that process for you. Any other questions, anybody? And sorry, just to follow on to that. Our belief is that if a candidate is going to go for IELTS, they've got a commitment to the end-to-end -end process. What we don't want to do at this time is pay for them to go into IELTS when they're not, when the risk is they're not truly committed and their hearts and minds aren't in it. We've suddenly lost money per candidate and we've got nothing for it at the other end. So kind of getting through IELTS is the first step of being serious on the journey. But I do take the point, if somebody said, there's an extra million pound, go and set up five IELTS schools in the Philippines, would that be worth looking at? Maybe it would be, but 
probably not today. Could you give a sort of an outline of the history of the business? Obviously, you're on Next. You're obviously quite a small company at this stage in your development. How long has the company been going? And um, <coughs> the company's only been going about 18 months. There was an original uh, company called Help Home Limited uh, that we came in and rescued. Uh, we had the relationship. We saw the business. So David Summer and myself saw the business in the UK, helped it grow, realised that they were trying to find candidates internationally with limited success. Um, um, we were in Manila, and we'd literally have the, the eureka moment of seeing, particularly around Makati, there are thousands of nurses, thousands of teaching colleges. As I said, there's a, a wages and salary disparity of 5,000 to 25,000. And believe it or not, international nurses want to come and work in the NHS. Um, we just put the business together from there. And from a financial point of view, you know, early days, you know, your turnover currently and your your plan turn over the next one, I'm two, in three? in the middle of a reporting cycle. Um, so the results are coming out next Wednesday. So I'm just going to be quiet on that, if you don't mind. Uh, what was your previous year then, which obviously is? Um, the previous year was, du -du -du -du. previous year is difficult to gauge, because when we went, came to market in September of last year, it was by a reverse takeover of a shell. And we'd never had any of the combined financials. So we were pre-revenue at that point in time. Is that an estimate, then? <laughs> no, I'm refusing I'm going to get to it out of you somehow. No, you can wait. Phone me on Thursday. OK. How do we come to it? Yeah, how do you come to that? We try and figure out that. What do you charge? Uh, that's what we've negotiated with our UK clients. Because it's a one-off payment, isn't it? That depends. So for some of our clients, it's a one-off payment. To ease cash flow with other clients, we have stage payments to through the process. But the number, the accepted number in, in our experience for healthcare recruitment is of the order of 20%. Could you roll this model out to other countries? Obviously, Philippines is just one country. So I'm just left smiling with my non-exec director in the past because we've, yeah. we've had exactly the same conversation. The answer is obviously yes. yes. Yeah. There is no, we have no sizzle sauce here. We have no unique intellectual property. Um, we are low on uh, balance sheet because we are web-based, cloud-based systems. The unique factor is we've identified a candidate pool in the Philippines. There are other areas you can identify candidate pools from, possibly India yeah. and others. Um, you've also got to look at what the, say, the recruiters in the UK are happy recruiting from. So you'll find that we've heard anecdotally that UK hospitals have flown over to the Philippines three years ago, had a fantastic experience of interviewing one, 200 candidates, offered them jobs. None of them had IELTS. So everybody's tried this model and found out that actually nobody turns up. So we stick with the Philippines. We will look at international markets to draw other candidates from. Um, looking at supply going to non-UK markets, uh, certainly into the GCC, that's a, a shorter um, onboarding cycle and onboarding steps to go to. Salaries are obviously lower. Um, if you're thinking about America, that's a tricky one. Um, we've, speaking to other people in the community, what we've seen somebody's business model is that they will take a candidate and they will apply for a green card visa for them. Um, and that could take three to five years. When they finally land in America, having had continuous experience on the way through, um, they will then rent them out on, say, a two-year long-term contract, which does work in America. I don't think that's going to be working for us. I think Health Home is going to focus on the UK and the GCC. It's going to bring in candidates from the Philippines. Um, it will probably think about bringing candidates in from other markets, but the focus is where we are at the moment. As I said, we're fairly young. We want to prove the business model, win more mandates in the UK, continue to win more work in the UAE, and then reevaluate. With Brexit, obviously, a lot of talk about immigration, level of immigration. The, the, these candidates really are, they're needed in the UK, and clearly they get a priority visa, don't they? So it won't affect your business model. Is that right? Correct. That's how we see it. Yeah. Um, we're also middling here, let me be blunt about it. So where we have some European candidates that do approach us and ask us about Brexit, we have to rely and fall back onto 
what are our clients saying the answer is, as opposed to us being able to say, this is our answer. So yeah, we're introducers, we do screening, we find the right candidates for the right jobs, and we take a, a cut in the middle. Any other questions, anybody? No? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks, Good